Okay. Hello world. Hi everyone. Um, Are we live? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. we're live. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the latency is definitely lower than it used to be. Yeah, settings actually, work. Uh, reduce the volume of my headphones, otherwise we'll get a oh. lot of bleed into the micro. Cool. So uh, welcome everyone to our fifteenth um, we webinar and Q and A session. Mm -hmm. It's the last one in this particular room. Uh, we're moving out in eight days. Mm. So the next Can't one, wait. yeah, in, uh, the next one in two weeks is going to be in, in a much bigger room, and uh, hopefully we'll have enough of uh, things already set up that it will look great. Hopefully. Yeah, um, I don't know if you've been with us on the last webinar or not, but uh, we mentioned that we are going to move the processing gear into the office, the yeah. new office to where we're moving and uh, leave the servers um, so the the boring stuff um, in the in the specialized server room um, and the gear with us so we're even closer to tape machines if everything if something goes awry um, yeah so uh, yeah. the motive here was uh, we still wanted to have the security and uh, um, separated access to your files and stuff so that nobody can get to that but we want to have the analog gear near to us if anything happens we can just jump and uh, take a look at with one glance at the wall is you know is everything working are the dials moving is, is are the view meters blinking and so on so um, that was the motive on why we want to do um, this split of uh, analog gear in one room and uh, computers in another room and we want to be in the same room as the analog gear so that we can uh, keep an eye on it and fix things if anything goes wrong so um, the way this Q&A and webinar usually works is uh, you guys prepare any questions you have about mix analog we'll answer them uh, so just write them down in the chat um, and otherwise we'll just update you on what's been happening in the, for the past uh, two weeks or so with, with us so uh, let uh, Giga kick it off with uh, some of the hardware news um, yeah, the, the biggest hardware news is rolling right behind us um, and this is very, very good news because um, we've been scratching our heads and um, tinkering in the bowels of this beautiful machine for the last two weeks, I suppose, maybe even more, um, because we even though we proved that the automation can work, the transport was causing us much trouble. Yeah. Uh, but now we, at least I hope, uh, found the last of the bugs in the control circuits. So, um, as you can see, evidently, the uh, transport is working now as it should. Yeah. Um, consider this to be a test drive because the, the machine is going <laughs> to be running uh, for a full hour or something for the duration of the webinar. Um, so yeah, that's that's the biggest news that's on the, the hardware one, front. Definitely. So it's a Studer A812, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Mark I. Um, it already comes with automation, so that's great. But the machine had quite a few problems when it came in. It wasn't so apparent because it just kind of worked. And then we fixed a few things and uh, it worked great. But uh, given some time and uh, we archived a few tapes, right? And then it just suddenly didn't want to work anymore. So then we dug in and found problem after problem. Uh, I think it was like uh, everything from caps to chips that went. Yeah, it was kind of a, an unfortunate combination of small little things throughout the machine. It was not one dead chip or one dry electrolytic cap or whatever, but it was a combination of small little um, errors. Uh, on multiple places in the circuits and that's why it took so much time to, to sort everything out but we found um, at least two leaking um, logic chips we found dry capacitors in the slew rate limiting circuit um, I had to literally um, you know, may make a make a thesis on <laughs> all control signals running up and down this um, this beautiful machine. Uh, so yeah, but in the end, um, now as you can see, it's working. It's um, ready. 
So after or in in the next few days, I guess we're going to be um, putting it some through some more rigorous testing. So testing its stability on various speeds, on multiple rewinding, on um, yeah, yeah, er everything that needs to be proven. It works a hundred percent. I think right now it's calibrated and the transport is working fine. Mm -hmm. So the only thing left to see is, will it work fine after a few days? Yeah. So because when we put things on Mixanalog, we'd like them to work uh, for, for long hours, uh, more or less uh, all the time. So with minimum or zero intervention from us, um, we've learned our lesson with the, the telephone can tape machine that that's, uh, you know, you can it's something that you can strive for, but it's uh, not easy to get there. It, there's uh, always something that can break or uh, yeah, can it's start an, it's an old machine making problems down the mm -hmm. road. So, uh, but it's tape machines, you know. <laughs> so um, we're going to take a few more days of testing with this one, and then we're putting it online. Mm -hmm. So should be quite soon, maybe next week. I hope so. Yeah, if if the new tape reel arrives in time. Yeah, we've got some tape reels uh, ordered mm. so that we'll have a few in stock all the time just in case if uh, there's another sudden drop of uh, frequency response or something like that. We have uh, fresh uh, tape on hand to just replace um, and not having to wait a week or something to get new ones delivered. So mm. we're making a stock of tape. Uh, it's going to be RTM LP35. Right? Yeah, it's recording the masters LPR35. One thousand and a hundred meters real, so that's approximately forty-five minutes at fifty nips. Great. So, regarding the software side, I guess. Yeah. Or maybe just uh, one more interesting tidbit. Yeah, I was looking at that <laughs> a moment ago. This is a very nice cable. Yeah. It goes well with your shirt. Uh -huh. it's almost <laughs> invisible. Now I'll put it here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is actually a very interesting cable. It's a digital interconnect cable that does 56 gigabits per second. So that's not megabits, but gigabits. And we're going to have that uh, running between the server and the uh, DAAD converters in our room. So preparing for that move. Um, and I think that's the last part of hardware that uh, we have to put yeah. in place so that we can actually make this move. I guess. Yeah. So, so moving on to software moving on to software first just a few bug fixes that we've done oh, okay yeah so um the uh the plans the plans that have extra uh math minutes are going to work automatically now from today on so if you have purchased a uh, plan that has 15 or 30 minutes of extra free gear time that's going to take uh, hold from now on automatically. You won't have to bug <coughs> mean support anymore to give you back your, the math that were erroneously um, appropriated from your account. Uh, so you won't be losing uh, MATs anymore for, for free gear uh, over the 30 minute mark per day. So if you have a 45 or 60 minute uh, free gear per, per day, that should now be automatic and you won't need to nag anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also uh, updating the uh, user interface for booking that it will always display uh, the correct price even if you so uh, if you go over the 30 minutes mark without a plan for example right now it says free Might no be it's okay. making some Just interesting noises old tape it's old tape um, so right now it will say it's free even though uh, it's uh, over 30 minutes but now it will tell you that it's going to book uh, exactly how many mat and also there's a, there was a discrepancy between if you got over the threshold, then the whole session would be um, considered over uh, while it's actually just a portion of it. For example, if you wanted to use one hour of uh, Fairchild uh, on a fresh day when you haven't used it yet, then, um, you know, logic, logically you'd pay just for the 30 minutes that's over the 30 minutes that you have for free. But right now it would calculate, it would uh, um, bill you the full 60 minutes. So we fixed that. Uh, so starting today, that's all going to work. Uh, no more need to contact support for that. Mm. And in general, um, less 
uh, M8 is spent for the same amount of processing. Yeah, so um, less stuff spent and um, more true to what we were, uh, what we have uh, written mm -hmm. on the uh, plans. So that's uh, hopefully good news for you guys who have plans. Uh, anyway, the big thing. The big thing. Let's go with the big thing. Okay, so gentlemen and I hope maybe a lady. Let, let's see if this works first. <laughs> there you go. Let's go to the top though. Okay. So, so this is our new website to be. Yes. So we are now finally taking the time uh, to make the website a bit uh, nicer. The thing is, uh, when you look at the current website, it's a bit, it's a bit dated. But more than that, it's um, there's not a lot of information there about what we do and how we do it and so on. It's very vague. So I think for all of you guys who have made accounts and are using uh, Mix Analog, I mean, you guys are wonderful because you've chosen to uh, trust us enough to make an account, even though there's very, very, very little information available uh, on the website on what it is actually and how does it work and who are the guys behind it. So, We've made a bit of a nicer presentation about that. Looks nicer, but also there's a lot more info there about uh, how it works and who did this and uh, when and so on. So maybe just have a quick scroll through. Uh, so there's a we're already announcing the plugins, mm -hmm. uh, the plugin version of Mixanalog, which is indeed coming soon. For a given value of soon but hopefully this year and uh, you can uh, click there and uh, join the, the beta program if you'd like so um, if you go down there then you can join the beta program of course all of you guys who are old subscribers um, will just send you an email once if you want to be in the beta program you don't need to go through this form but uh, uh, we'll keep you in touch and uh, in, in the loop with the progress anyway so uh, this is mostly for new people who are interested in uh, Mix Analog. So moving on, we uh, tell a bit about what Mix Analog is and uh, what it's like. Uh, uh, there's a nice endorsement by uh, a gentleman who'd rather remain anonymous, but he's a, a well-known uh, uh, Belgian uh, music producer. And uh, a bit more information about how it works and, and so on so mm. um, it's a bit more in depth and uh, talks a bit more about uh, how Mixano came to be and where we are and who we are and so on so that's what we have uh, and we are going to release that I think very um, soon is this already uh, we can show it yeah, yeah sure so let's see if it works on your computer Yes. Yeah, just click that. Okay, cool. Yeah. And actually there's this one's hardwired to show no sessions, but that's okay. Um, so we are also taking the time to uh, update a bit the logic and uh, the graphics and so on behind uh, mix analog the the booking part and uh, the profile and uh, media management parts and so on so this will also be released very soon and uh, it's mostly it looks like a facelift but there's um, a lot of the old stuff has been cleaned out because it's not used anymore and uh, we are uh, consolidating everything so it's a bit more more logical so this is for example the wizard to create new uh, new session it's just upload choose gear and choose time and that's it so we're finishing up the the last section of course but um, there's already uh, kind of a feeling of, of it being quite clean and modern and uh, doesn't take up uh, there's less clicking involved to to get everything done yeah, I just wanted to maybe clarify a bit that the the big it, it's not maybe it's not really apparent just by mm. looking at this um, very um, I lost the word. Yeah, 
at a glance. Uh, yeah, at a glance um, presentation. But um, the, the this booking or let's say lobby app that lets you manage your session, upload files and all that has been um, put together with the landing page yeah. um, design wise and um, more programming wise. I don't yeah, know. coding wise. Coding, yeah. Coding wise, it's all the same code, which is important because uh, we can integrate landing page and the booking and so on in all in a kind of a, a seamless transition. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is a good example where you can go and take a look at the products that we have. And for example, you're interested in uh, in the tape. And then when you, um, you can read about the tape, you can, uh, if you scroll down, there's some more information mm -hmm. about it. Why would you use it? And so on. There's a video tutorial. But the most important thing on the top, you've got a book, just exactly this one. And if you click that, then it's already pre-selected in, in the uh, wizard to create a session. So it's small things like that, but eventually want to make big things. Like we want to have um, the session the, all the knobs that you have uh, made in the in the live um, session, all the adjustments that you, that you made, um, already visible from the booking app, for example. So we're making everything, all of the software for uh, the web page, we're making all of that um, kind of one in the same web page, so that information can be shared more easily, you know, programming-wise. So it's so much easier to say, okay, wouldn't it be nice if users could see what their last settings were and maybe save that as a preset without, I don't know, um, making a new session and blindly copying stuff, don't, not knowing what they're going to get uh, into or uh, what it was left like. Maybe they'd want to uh, set up a few things before they go into the session and so on uh, with uh, integration of the live, the booking and the landing uh, free kind of uh, softwares, web pages, whatever you call them. Um, we have this opportunity to make this and it's going to be much much more easier than before when all of these were separate softwares so uh, we had to uh, if we wanted to make something like this we would have to duplicate the effort in another app we couldn't just copy paste code so mm -hmm. now we can um, just say okay just do this the same way as it's done in the live app for example and we could put the uh, the knobs or the knob positions on the screen Hey. Okay. Hello, Charaka. Um. So anyway, um, maybe if you just click through the, the last two tabs, uh, which are a bit better now. Uh, so we've got the media library. Now we're, uh, we're taking the edit. The most important edit function, it's not quite implemented now, but the yeah. idea is that you'll be able to rename uh, and uh, uh, rename the files and give them um, to different artists and so on and uh, replace the files once they're already on so there's a few options to do that and um, also what i'd like to do in the future is to make folders so yeah sure so in this uh, view you would also have folders on the left mm. um, so this would be a bit more like dropbox for example mm. uh, with navigation for folders and you could then save files from uh, different like projects you could just drag all of them up and and have uh, all the files, I don't know, uh, the stems from one project be in one directory, in one folder. Yeah, it's organization. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we're moving into this direction finally and uh, uh, this, you know, new um, front end, yeah, let's call mm -hmm. it front end, uh, is giving us the opportunity to do this, do this fast and do it once and then it will be in all of the free aspects of, of the software. Mm -hmm. And um, here in the profile view, not many things have changed, but uh, the important thing is we are adding the option to redeem codes directly in the app, which means we will have codes now for redemption so that you can get mad, uh, not just with money, but also with some activity like uh, maybe posting about us or, or something like that, or there will be a... Um, uh, what do you call them? Giveaways. Um, the giveaways and uh, competitions. Mm. So the results of a competition or a giveaway would be a redemption code and then you would put that in um, and you would get mad for that. Uh, also, the uh, we're going to add here uh, the method to change the password. Uh, right now, it's quite difficult to change the password. You have to know 
um, it's a bit a bit tricky but here it, uh, the thing that will happen is if you are not using Facebook or Google to log in then you will be able to click change password you will get a uh, password reset link mm, cool. uh, in your email and that's where you can then uh, change your password regarding emails also we are going to require that the emails are verified mm. um, it's uh, not going to be in August but uh, soon after we will start requiring this because people are again signing up with emails that uh, don't actually exist. Oh, oh what did we get? <laughs> Something new. So uh, we got mail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is um, if you if you get an email um, confirmation, then you and you confirm that then you get your email confirmed and if you have an email that's confirmed then you can make sessions otherwise you can't make sessions uh, we're not making this uh, change right now but it's going to happen so if you guys are using some temporary emails then uh, maybe make sure you know the password for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe uh, okay so and the last one that's also going to be interesting at least for me. Yeah, so um, this, the settings in the... Oh, maybe you want to introduce that if you like. I, I just hope I know everything that's going to get into if the not, settings I'll, tab. If not, I'll augment you. Uh, but this is going to be the default settings for all your sessions. Yeah. So if you would like... You probably most of the time work on the same screen and maybe if on your particular screen size and um, resolution, a certain magnification of the... Um, of the GUI works best. At yeah. least I like to work at 120%. Yeah. Um, and I have to change that every time I get into the session. I have to manually change to 120% uh, GUI magnification. And it takes time and it's annoying. So yeah. I would, I'm really, really happy that this is going to be uh, something you can um, preset in the settings tab. And um, so We have a short question oh. now from Charaka. Can you use uh, Mix Analog with your mobile? Yes, we've tested it on uh, iPhone and on certain Android tablets. Uh, usually it works fine. Uh, just try it on a free product and uh, let us know if you have any trouble. Just mm. use the chat and let me know if there's trouble. But yes, Mix Analog has been designed for mobile use too. I so would say probably a rule of thumb would be that any browser that's built on Chrome one way or another um, yeah, well, it's probably going to work. I just say recent, recent browsers. Mm -hmm. Just you know, past two years, one year is even better. Past one year, released browsers is going to work probably. Mm -hmm. uh, mobile is a bit different because we don't we don't test with mobile as such. So if it works, that's great. But we don't really like plan on it that yeah, much. Yeah, put extra effort in it. But if you get into trouble with that, then um, you know. We'll try and fix it for you. So uh, if there's going to be trouble for uh, mobile use, just let me know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, going on with the settings, there's also, um, if you are far away, mm -hmm. then you will probably need to change the uh, buffering size on every uh, session. So it's not just GUI scaling, but also the, the buffering size and so on, and a few other uh, audio related things. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also would like to, at some point, include uh, things like uh, the, the monitoring level adjust and so on, so that you start with a certain monitoring um, level already preset and so on. Yeah. So th there's a few things, um, also a maybe a dark and a light mode for uh, the the live um, the live uh, the live part. App. Yeah, and there's also certainly something that we have to do in the future is uh, the amount of animations or let's say how frequently the animations on the screen are updated we found out that uh, some computers are uh, really have a problem with uh, fast animations so that's uh, view meters and um, uh, peak and RMS meters that we have those are all animations from uh, the computer's point of view and uh, if you have a large retina screen then you have to have a quite a fast processor or it won't be really smooth but the biggest problem is then it cuts into the audio uh, priority unfortunately and then you get some skipping and so on so um, what users do right now sometimes is they just uh, drag the um, window 
of the of mix analog to be a bit smaller and then because it's less uh, pixels then it's a bit faster but um, we would like to make a setting where you can just say okay that's cool i want to have the same large screen i just want animations i don't know what uh 50 percent less frequently updated so it would they will be a bit less smooth but at least i can work on my whole screen mm. so that's also one of the uh one of the things so all set and forget exactly so the idea Stuff. is um instead of taking your valuable time when you are in the live mode and tweaking the settings before you can even begin. The idea is that you set those once and then if you didn't change your computer and internet, you're probably going to want to be on the same settings anyway. So, mm. so what we want to do is make those persistent across sessions so they will save and uh, you'll be able to use those. So the idea is um, a bit more modern look, uh, saving your time so that you have more time to tweak stuff and are taking less time with uh, doing all of this administration stuff and uh, yeah just uh, everything a bit more running more smoothly and uh, less clicking to get things done yeah and that i think sums up the work that we've done so far yeah. on the new web page yeah that's and, true um, as it looks right now, um, when is this going to be um, live? Well, for the landing page, I'm pretty happy. So I think it's going to be this week. Oh, nice. uh, so I think it's going to go live this week. I actually put it online today if there weren't some other things that we really need to address on it before. But I think we'll be able to do that this week. So that would be very nice so mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, when you um, send the link to Mix Analog to some of your friends, uh, they won't be like, what, what the hell is this? It looks like something from the 80s. I <laughs> <laughs> have no idea what this is for. And I mean, are you using this? <laughs> are you trusting these people? Why? <laughs> so hopefully um, you'll get less of that. You see, you have a cool shirt. I have a cool shirt, yes, apparently. It fits yes. the optical cables. <laughs> and that's the important yeah. bit. Um, okay, so with that in mind, so yeah, this is going to ship now for, for the app, for the updated app. I have no idea. I'm hoping soon, but uh, what's going to happen in between is we're going to change over to the new servers, as we said, and we're going to change. We're going to take the gear to a separate room, which I hope happens this month. And somewhere in between, maybe we will have time to do the, the finalize this this new look and uh, of the of the app. Mm. Uh, and there's one more thing that I'd like to do with the new app. Uh, I think we already talked about it, but I'm not sure if, um, if we decided on it. But I'd like to do it this way: is that you will be able to go into the live mode, even if you don't really yeah. have um, a session going on. I mean, if you don't have a reservation. So, I don't know, let's say that your um, Fairchild session starts in five minutes, but you could already go in and set up your session. So you would select the right file and you would maybe even set some settings to initial settings that you'd like. And you just have the play button disabled until um, the time comes when the machine is actually for you. Uh, and it would also be after the fact. So after you've already done everything in your uh, Fairchild session, maybe it was yesterday or a week before, you could still open it and you would see the same interface with the same knobs and everything in the same positions so that you know what it was like, mm -hmm. right? So you could remember, aha, okay, so it was this file with this settings. Okay, cool. Um, there was one, um, let's say, feature request. Yeah, for loudness meter. Like we will add a loudness meter. Yeah, but uh, not only to the better maker limiter, but to all of the gear. Mm. So there will be a general mastering. Yeah, that's meter. that's that's why what, what I wanted to say that it's probably not coming specifically to better maker, yeah. but to the whole app. Um, yep. But as with all things, um, as you can see, there's not really a whole army of us. Not really. <laughs> not so, yet, at least. Uh, to, in a way, I. I think I can say that we are at least a bit sorry that we are talking about stuff like simple features um, as loudness metering and stuff like yeah. that for months on end and still not yeah. uh, delivering them. But um, we try to prioritize things that would make the app work solidly 
And um, well, yeah. I think you know, an, an app like Mix Analog is like a house. Mm. And it has to have a good solid foundation, and then you can make it pretty on the outside and useful to live in. Mm. But uh, first, you've got to get the basement done and. You have to convince the utilities company to bring you water and, and <laughs> electricity and everything. So before that happens, unfortunately, yeah. uh, there's not a lot. You know, it's an empty lot. It looks like nothing's happening. But mm. trust us, it's definitely we are working like crazy to get all of the great stuff out. It's just um, <laughs> it just takes a bit of effort and time uh, when we finally get to the good stuff. All right, so that's all I had for for the software, I think. Um, let's see, are there any questions from you guys? You can also have some suggestions. Mm -hmm. Also, I think um, Martin is considering if uh, he would like to participate in the webinar. I don't He's think it's going to be a consideration <laughs> anymore. I think we should just force him to get, it, get in here. Come on, say hello. <laughs> come here and say, say, say hello, yeah. Hello. And this is Martin. He's also doing software and stuff. Yeah. And coffee. And coffee, and the most important component of uh, every startup. Ah, the coffee. I'll have some. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, while the, the fuel of <laughs> startups is uh, being refilled, uh, Martin is the guy who is helping us a lot with uh, backhand programming, so that's the um, that's the foundation that um, that's all Boyan the things that go around this on yeah. this cable. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the foundation that Boyan was talking about uh, a minute ago. Um, so that there's a lot to be done to make the app as stable as possible, uh, to make the streaming uh, firm and. Um, yeah, I think the the lossy streaming was uh, his work, um, mm -hmm. as well as quite a few fixes on the booking end of things. Mm -hmm. I've done the last round of fixes, but Martin's done quite a few very nice features uh, and fixes in the past. So um, slowly but surely, we're expanding the team and uh, getting more people on board. And hopefully that will mean that we'll have a very nice mix analog by yeah. the end of the year with all of the bells and whistles. That would be great. We you include coffee maker processing on the website? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know coffee, if you have coffee the is, a, is an interesting subject, though. You know, it's maybe even more opinionated than audio. <laughs> oh, by far. Uh, do you think we have enough bandwidth to pour coffee <coughs> in on one side and to come out the Ethernet port on the other side? I think we'll wait for for uh, Star Trek era transporters. Then we'll transport <laughs> uh, coffee yeah. to you. Then we'll be coffee in the cloud. Martin will make it and uh, but we'll teleport it to that, you. That was a nice cue. Uh, on yep. What is that? Construction work. Construction um, work. So yeah, the, it, it's kind of um, <coughs> made me do a brain shortcut. But uh, actually, a day or two, I think it was yesterday, we were considering including uh, a very peculiar and funny piece of gear in Mix oh, Analog. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, the 8-track? The 8-track, yeah. yeah. I don't know if... We saw uh, the... There was a lot of... Uh, there's always a lot of interest in the tape machine, mm -hmm. of all things. And so um, now that we're adding another one, and hopefully we'll be adding more in the future, but we thought, you know, couldn't we maybe bring in also another sort of um, tape-ish format that um, that has a very unique sound and uh, probably you know, would sound really interesting as an effect or maybe even as a sort of a lo-fi master. So we're looking for these guys, the Pioneer, I think it's Pioneer, right? Uh, mm -hmm. RH65 and the RH100. Those are very interesting uh, hi-fi 8-track recorders and players. Bye-bye. I'm just trying to find a picture, so for those of you that... You're not actually uh, broadcasting the browser. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, oh, I'm okay. trying to prepare the picture before, so you don't have to look at me browsing through Google. Um, but I think it was... The... Yeah, yeah, the 100, yeah. 
Yeah, it's this, this one, yeah. Uh, okay, so anyway, there's yeah. uh, there's this funny technology that used to be in, uh, quite popular, I think, in the 70s, where you could uh, get tape, uh, a loop of, endless loop of tape. There you go. Um, I'll just open this. Yeah, there oh, we okay. go. So you could get a unit um, that you could put kind of a cassette in it, and then there would be a loop of tape inside with a pinch roller and everything. Mm -hmm. And you could record it if you wanted to, but you could. But the idea was to play it back, and um, because it's a loop, then it could, you know, just loop loop around forever. But it is actually perfect for uh, mix analog because you could have tape that you don't have to rewind. Mm -hmm. um, still, I'm not sure. I mean, we're quite sure that the performance of this tape is nowhere near uh, mm -hmm. the actual uh, serious tape machines like the uh, Studer behind me and the Telefunken that we have online already. But it would be really interesting. Yeah, so, I another think, flavor. Yeah, I think a lot of people also use tape for very creative purposes uh, because um, the telephone can, although it's a '70s machine, if calibrated really carefully, um, at least to me it was surprising how transparent that machine can be, and it's. Yeah, you have to watch yeah. your levels, but. Mm -hmm. When when you are inside the the level range where it's linear, it's very linear. Yeah, it's very interesting how when you open up a forum, everybody is very um, careful about tape. You know, oh, that really um, it changes the sound so much. Uh, we <laughs> don't use that, or maybe you know, use that all the time because mm -hmm. you get the sound. That's and it's true. But if you drive it, if you don't, it's actually very transparent yeah. as a medium. Um. But those little buggers, I think, could be not seriously transparent. So no. they could be used as, you know, creative effect. Yeah. Um, and not being, you know, insanely expensive. And I just, by the looks of it, I wouldn't say insanely complicated. Yeah. Uh, I would say that they would be prime subjects for doing all sorts of interesting mods. Um, so it could be... Yeah, um, made either to saturate really cool or yeah you and know, let's, let's not yeah. forget most of the high-end ones come with Dolby mm -hmm. and Dolby is a effect on its own so the compander and expander uh, the compressor and expander combination on them is uh, also very interesting so um, you don't only get the effect of tape but also of compression and expansion mm -hmm. so could be really interesting for some sort of lo-fi productions, hip-hop stuff, I think, could be very interesting. I don't know, I haven't heard one in my lifetime, so... I'm just theorizing. But it is interesting is how we found it, because we were scouring the internet for a source of... Lubricated tape. Yeah, broadcast type LPR35 tape, so it's the same um, formula um, as the one that we're using right now, but it has been extra lubricated, so it lasts longer. And it's not. Um, it's damn hard to get. Though. Yeah. It doesn't seem like there's a recent source. I mean, there's no way to get fresh tape like that. Mm. So, unfortunately, because I think it's a great format. The same as ordinary tape, just uh, not in the front where you have the, the magnetic particles, but on the back end where it, it's just for, for lubrication. Mm. You've got some uh, graphite lubricant so unfortunately we didn't get that but these tapes are lubricated yeah they, they come only in that format because they wind and rewind inside yeah, the same cassette they were, they were the used time. yeah they were used for hours and days on end so mm. they had to figure out how to get the mechanical uh, use to, to not do so much damage and of course the answer is lubrication but um, there you have it. There's there's an option to get a lot of lubricated tape. We just don't know what the quality is like. And we got a few questions from. I hope I'm gonna pronounce this right. Uh, Jekyll Alexis. Yeah. Um, so first, thanks. Um, we really appreciate the fact that you found our service useful. Thank you. Um, so his question yeah. is. Uh, do we plan to get mastering devices like Shadow Hills compressor or other mastering compressor and a loops meter? So we are slated to get a few uh, mastering grade compressors in the future, in the near future. 
So the one that we already have uh, in the works is the G24 from Gyref, mm -hmm. the passive aggressive. Then uh, what we have um, agreed with Bettermaker is that we'll be sending their mastering compressor next to us. And we have agreed with um, Elysia for the Empressor. And we might get an Alpha this Eventually. year. Eventually. Yes. So I'm going to Elysia uh, this month. To pay we are, aren't we going? Well, we can go. Uh, I'm definitely <laughs> going. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's not a question. <laughs> cool. And uh, so we'll, we'll try to negotiate uh, an Alpha. Hopefully they'll... And maybe another we'll side, yes. side remark to, to, the, to the first paragraph. We are actually planning on doing multi-track support for Mix and Lock. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not going to give a time frame for that because... Um, that development, be, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, yeah. But hopefully yeah. we'll, we, can, uh, we can get there. It's a prerequisite for our analog summing uh, mixer that we have mm. already developed the hardware for. So we really are incentivized to do that, uh, the multi-track thing. And I've done some testing very recently, like less than a month ago. I think it was on the previous webinar. Yeah when I was doing some testing, preliminary testing on modifying our software, you know, how much, how much effort it would take to bring in multiple tracks and mixing. Um, and I was surprised because the initial test proved to be very fruitful and it seemed it was a lot less work than what we initially thought. So let's get this first round of uh, updates to the front end out. So the, the new web page, the, more easy, the easier to use uh, and more integrated uh, live and uh, and uh, booking experiences. But after that, um, I definitely want to prioritize uh, two things, and that would be multi-tracks and eventually plug-in. So mm -hmm. that's probably the way to go. Uh, regarding for the um, tape use, for the tape use, that's a question for you, I, yeah, think. How, I think. How many times can you? Yeah, ballpark is roughly 100 rewinds. So um, when you play it, um, it depends heavily on the transport system of the tape machine. So the tape on the Telefunken machine will not last as long as the one on the Studer machine because this one is much newer and has a more sophisticated comp or complicated um, transport system with much better tension sensing and uh, bearings on all the spinning, um, on all the parts that the tape passes. Um, so probably the tape itself is going to last longer on the Studer machine than it does on the Telefunken, but um, let's say ballpark value is 100 spins from end to end and rewinds, because rewinds um, are the... Yeah, the death of tape. Yeah, the death of tape, so <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so that many times. Mm. On, but we do now. I think we have a twice a week. We go and in and um, clean the hats. Clean the hats, yeah. and we also do a check with the uh, to check for the high frequency response and levels. Right? Yeah. Actually, I'm do doing a sweep response. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah, doing so a sweep response. So end to end um, response from um, from the tape, and then I compare it to the initial. Um, measurement that I did with the new tape and freshly calibrated machine. So if I think that something's tilted in any direction, I um, go in with a meter and screwdriver and everything and um, yeah. try to make the machine um, level match between left and right again. So there's another question about the uh, effect and reverb units like A636. So what we are looking for very yeah all the time is an EMT140. Uh, we'll see if we can get that and also we're looking for a spring reverb for the AKG um, spring reverb mm -hmm. so those two are kind of on our short list on what to get um, after that sure uh, the more the merrier <laughs> so definitely looking into effects uh, I'd say you know it's um, it, I'd, if, if I got an EMT 140 and a place to put it in I'd do it right now but um, I think in terms of priority, uh, getting the multi-track thing down is a kind of a nice prerequisite for effects because then you can use the effects as um, returns yeah. in your mix. So 
I'd say it's going to work in that uh, order. So we're probably going to do much more on the uh, multi-track stuff before we get to the effects. Well, but most of the effects work in a parallel fashion. Anyway. Exactly. So yeah. this functionality has to come first before we can implement yeah. um, all ty types and kinds of send effects. Yep. So um, that's kind of our thinking about it. Um, I love effects. I love reverb. So. Uh, personally, I can't wait to get as many different of them, uh, as many different effects as possible. Um, hopefully, something like a Dimension D and uh, maybe some some sort of uh, tape echoes and so on would be the next logical mm -hmm. steps. But all in due time. So so yeah, um, let's see if there's any more questions. Mm -hmm. Not right now, but maybe there will be some in a few seconds. There's one, one thing that I know, um, I don't think we mentioned yet, but we'd really like to do. Uh, we'd like to make a um, webcam live uh, oh, yeah. live the stream of, of, the, uh, of the gear rack and the tape rack. So there's going to be two racks, one with the tapes and one with the rest of the gear and the ADDA converters. And we'd like to put that online as a 24-7 stream so that you guys would be able to uh, see how it works and see all the, uh, the blinky lights and uh, the tapes uh, running and rewinding and stopping and so on. So, <laughs> so that's something that we want to do in a new place where we're going to have the, the gear in a place where there's actual sunlight because right now in the server room there's no light mm. um, by design because that's a lot of, a lot of uh, temperature coming in, a lot of uh, energy that we have to get rid of, otherwise uh, it gets very hot. Yeah, well, unfortunately, maybe for if there's someone watching the stream that um, is here for the first time or new to Mix Analog, um, those live streams are going to be, I think, pretty um, interesting or fun to watch while using the tape, but probably not as much while using stuff like I don't know the mastering EQ or yeah, the the mastering VCA EQ, compressor or something because it's a, a black box with a logo and a power LED um, because we we do not um, yeah. implement moving parts uh, into the automation but we do it electronically yeah. as you guys will be able to read on the web page once it's live on the new one where we I think take a little more time to explain it mm. we started off with um, mechanically moving the the knobs and then we just found out that we'd like something more precise and uh faster so that's why we eventually you know, went into the electronic way of doing it like better maker do or wes audio do or there's a bunch of guys now including ssl and neve who do it electronically uh, back then that was a a huge new thing mm -hmm. um but yeah the the end result is that a box with uh digital uh, control over analog is just a box with no knobs because you don't need them anymore. Uh, the computer tells the the box on you know what the EQ setting is, and inside the electronics just make it so. Yeah, There's no need to have any knobs, so it's boring to look at, <laughs> but yeah, that's life. Yeah. But I think it's still going to beat having nothing. So at least you'll see the ADDA lights going around. And if you're using a tape, then you'll actually see some physical movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, also the VU meters on the gear the that has yeah. VU meters is, is moving. So 1176, mm -hmm. Fairchild, stuff like that. That's still going to work. I mean, it's going to be interesting. And I can see that Jakob joined us again. Hi there. Hey, Jakob. Um, and downtime is probably going to be sometime or after 14th of August. Yeah, but he's he's saying that it's going to be uh, an interesting um, sort of a distraction. When oh, yeah, now I get down. it. I didn't yeah. read everything. That's, that's very <laughs> okay. true. That's very true. And that was also my intention was that, you know, uh, you there's something wrong with your session and you write to support. Hey, my stuff is not working. Yeah. And then you can say, sorry, 
and we're yeah. gonna fix it and then you can see all, all of the guys there you know going around the tape machine and saying maybe it's this screw maybe it's mm, this tension thing and oh and now it works and yeah the, the stream has to have have no sound <laughs> otherwise you that's a that's a requisite because otherwise um, cursing will be yeah um, it's a constant <laughs> <laughs> because um yeah yeah but definitely there uh, that was also my uh, intention was to have the repair work um streamed out so that uh, at least there's something interesting to do while you wait yeah. for your session to get uh, back in order though we hope of course there will be uh not a lot of, of that happening mm. we'd rather have it work all the, all the time anyway so um yeah let's see any any more questions So as far as what we've prepared for today, that's it. That's, I think that's it. Yeah, nothing, um, nothing really more to yeah. say. It's gonna be a hell of a job to move everything here. Mm. There's a lot of junk we ac accumulated <laughs> over the years, but oh well, we've got 14 days to do it. Yeah. So, but why would you throw stuff away? <laughs> like if you buy uh, 10 capacitors too much, why why would you throw that away? That's true, though. And, and that stuff accumulates. <laughs> and I still have a few things that I just can't... I couldn't ever put myself to throw away. I have a set of original Octal Gardner transformers for germanium Neve uh, channels. And I might be interested in that. You're not getting those. No, no, no. no. <laughs> those are my, those are my babies. Okay, no, but no, no. you're not selling them on eBay? Nope. Okay. No, okay. Not ever. Okay. And the tape is still rolling. That's also cool. Yeah. It's, it's been nice and silent and mm -hmm. just doing its job behind us all the time. So I think that's a, that's a good sign. Yeah. We'll have it do that for, for a few more hours and then I think we are happy. Hmm. Okay. And with that, I can see that there are no more new questions. Yep. No more questions. Everybody knows everything. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. With that, we would conclude today's webinar. Mm -hmm. um, thanks again for being with us. Um, I hope you got some answers or some cool insights on what's going on on our side. Um, so yeah, thanks again and uh, see you in two weeks. Same place, same time. Actually, it's a new place, but... <laughs> same YouTube channel. Okay. New room. That works. <laughs> see you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.